thank you all for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the film. Uh, I'm now joined by uh, the director of Liborio, uh, Nina Martinez Sosa, and we're going to um, discuss the uh, the film a bit. Um, I do. I should uh, uh, mention that New Directors New Films is supported by Film at Lincoln Center's New Wave Membership Program. Film at MoMA is made possible by Chanel with additional support provided by the annual film fund. Um, so let's let's get started. Um, so uh, Nino, in your in your introduction, um, you sort of alluded to the uh, to the sort of real life or historical basis uh, for for uh, the film's narrative. Um, but I was, you know, I was wondering um, sort of what what initially uh, sort of drew you? Well, first of all, I guess how you know what is the kind of place of this uh, of this story? Um, uh, sort of within within the DR, um, uh, and um, I was wondering sort of what attracted you to it, and sort of maybe if it had to do with the kind of um, this combination of it having these kind of this aspect of like an anti-colonial parable, but also with like met metaphysical sort of elements through this through the kind of like uh, the resurrection kind of angle. Um, could you just could you tell us a bit about sort of what drew you to the story initially? Yes, uh, first of all, thank you very much for having us here on the podium. And what, uh, what, a, what, what's the appeal of Liborio for me? It, it's, it's a complex question because uh, it, it, it's a lot of things that I like about Liborio. But I think that uh, this complexity is what I like most. But first of all, I can say that the, the the capacity to, to have the, the triumph of the helpless uh, myth in it uh, is what I first uh, began to, to look in the, in the myth of Liborio, right? It, it is this, uh, this hope that never dies what, what uh, threw me to, to, to approach the, the character. Because I think that that's what, what Liborio means to the people who believes in, in him, right? Uh, that, that believe that he's still alive right now. And, and Liborio was a historical man, but also a spiritual man and live in these different uh, layers. Uh, and I think that it also, what, what you said about the metaphysical uh, things about him, uh, it also appeals to me a lot that it was a way to approach the, the popular religiosity of the Caribbean, the way uh, these people my people, uh, we see the, the reality, the way we process the, the reality, the way we, we tell the, the truth, the way we tell the stories, right? And, and all of that uh, conveys in, in the liberalism. And I think that that's what, I, what it appeals. So I begin to, to look for, for the character. It, it was like a very, uh, a very, uh, diffuse character that not a lot of people talk about. And uh, I began to go to the places where the liberalism uh, is alive right now to meet the people who profess the, the beliefs and to share with them, to travel with them to, to the places, to the real places where Liborio was, also to the spiritual places where they get and, and to celebrate uh, parties, ritual, to share their food, to share with them. And, and I think that all that uh, give me the, 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 strong, the strength to, to, to go for, for the film and to, and, to, and to not talk about only the character, but also the community, right? That, that it's, I think, that the way we, we try to approach it. But yeah, I, I, I believe that Liborio, it's, it's like the, the messiah, this uh, hero uh, journey you can you can define it by that, but uh, it it also it's more complex because it, it's it's a mix of different types of heroes. It's, it's not only the, the messiah, the, the religiosity. It, it, it is, it's also a fighter if you want to look at that way, uh, and, and it's also a, a man who it's a, a liar because a lot of people treat him like a liar. Uh, uh, a deceiver, a, a guy who, who wants to, to, 
I don't know how to say it in English, but, but to, to, to get, to, get to, to use people, right? So I think all that, this complexity is what I, what I loved about the, the character and the, and the story itself, right? And, and that's what moves me to, to look for it. Yeah, I think that, um, that complexity really uh, comes across, I think, through the, um, through the films, like the, through the form of the, of the film and, and through some of the things um, I think you, you, you do with the, uh, with the narrative, the way that the narration of the film plays out. So I'm thinking specifically of the, of the film being segmented into the seven episodes and this, um, the sense that the narrative is always very um, uh, multivalent. It's, it's issuing from, it's not just from the perspective of the, uh, the title character, it's, um, it's coming from a lot of different directions. Um, so I was wondering if you could just uh, tell us a bit about um, about the process of writing the film and sort of how um, how you conceptualize, uh, I guess, yeah, the kind of segmentation that, that I was referring to, but also you make a very, um, your use of ellipsis uh, is very striking. And I think it, um, it uh, like these, um, these sort of little gaps or like uh, moments, moments that are truncated or seem to end sort of unexpectedly. And that, that does a lot for the film uh, uh, rhythmically, of course. I'm wondering uh, how much of that was, um, how much of that happened during the writing? Yes, uh, well, we, we begin to look only for the character. We, we begin, no, I mean, we, we don't try to do a, a biopic like a, a usual one we always try to do a, a, a mythical uh, journey, but we, we center at the first two versions of the script, we center only in Liborio, but then we have a script advisor who, who says to us, because I have these anthropological views and I was like seeing the Dominicans in myself as uh, like with, with the eyes of uh, Jean Rouge when, when he goes to the Africans and. It's like the, the eyes of somebody from, from abroad who come to this place and look at, at them, right? And when this script advisor, Eliseo Altunaga, a, a very good teacher, uh, tells to me, uh, you, have, you, you don't have to watch the flower. You have to become the flower and then tell what, you, what, what, what the flower is. And from that moment, we begin to, to look for different ways to approach the script writing. We know that there wasn't a story of Liborio. There was a lot of stories about Liborio. So, so that's always the, the, the thing, no? It, it, there's not only one story. There are uh, uh, as many stories as people are telling stories, right? So we try to depict that in the, in the writing and we, we, we get this uh, idea of making a portrait uh, a Cubist portrait, a uh, polyedric uh, portrait of, of, uh, of the myth, of the character, uh, of the belief, uh, but about, about these different angles. And these angles are different characters that are watching. These characters are archetypical characters. And all this uh, structure, uh, I think that help us to approach the, the theme uh, in a, in a better way, right? To not only to try to, to tell one thing, but try to, to make you feel what the belief really means and, and, and what the belief really is. And I think that, that uh, that's what we try to achieve, right? Uh, if, if, you, if you name the thing, maybe that's, the, the, you lose it because uh, the, the, that's the name, you, you are putting borders in it. So if, if you don't name it, if, if you just leave it open, you can wash it and you can feel it and, and it's something different for, for everybody. That's what we try to do. And, and I think we achieve it because uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the result, of course. It's a complex uh, narrative. We have a complex story. We have uh, a lot of, uh, a very big uh, arc time. So we have, uh, like 20 years uh, of, of real years, like a uh, eugetic uh, time. And we have to, to do this ellipsis because we have to, to focus on the, on the feelings of the people that, that are narrating at this time, right? And we don't try to, to tell the, the story 
the, the, the little story, right? The little tale. It's more about uh, accompanying, uh, being with uh, these people that is around the main character. And, and this main character is defining with the strength, with his words, with his actions, uh, at all these people, right? It, it, we see it like a, like a sun, like the solar system where the, these planets are, are all conveying around this big star and, and this star with his gravity and his power and his light, it's changing the life of all the, the people that is uh, evolving around him. It's more or less, that was what we try to do and we uh, write the script. But then we go to the shooting and the script is in the, in, in the wastebasket and at the wastebasket and, and we achieve what we achieve and, and to, to transform reality is very difficult and to put it in, in front of a camera, it's also very difficult. We don't have a lot of means to do it. So we have to, to try to, to get to, to all of that with the, with the ways that we could, right? And, and that's another story, but, but yeah, the, the, the script writing was, was a very long process. We, we went with like, I don't know, five years, six years writing wow. and, and I finished the, the last version of the script. I finished it the, the day after, the day before the shooting, right? It was, uh, it was really, really there. I was changing and, and changing everything, not, not changing like one sentence, changing everything. But, but I'm, I'm very happy with the script. And of course, uh, in, the, in the shooting, you uh, rewrite the script and then at the editing room, you, you do whatever you can with the things that you get, right? But, but yeah, I begin the, the process with Pablo Arellano, a, a friend and a writer, a very good writer. But then we, I, I, I begin to write myself because I, I try to, to be at the Dominican Republic and he can't. And, and I think that it was necessary for the last versions to, to be present there and to, to stay there at the, at, the, at the border near Haiti, at the Dominican South, where the film take place, uh, to be there to, to write also, and to be uh, at that place, feeling the, that energy and being with them, with the people. It's, it's very different than, than to be in, in Madrid, where I live, uh, cold, and, and the people are very different, right? So, so I, I the, the last versions I ended myself, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the script. It, 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 it's a different one, of course, and and it makes you think, and it makes you. Uh, I mean, it, it's not easy. It's it's it, it's not an easy uh, film to to watch, and not only because of the pace, but also because of the script, of course. But I think I. I mean, it's it's like when you are getting up in the mountain, you 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 have to suffer to 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 go there to the top and watch from there, right? Yeah. Well, I guess um, then I am interested, given some of these uh some of these changes that you made that you made, particularly like in the in in the shooting, I'm of course just I'm of course interested in how you um and how you work with your performers um. Uh, so maybe we could begin by talking a bit about the uh, about the casting, but um, but uh, I think you know our the new director's audience will uh, probably be particularly interested to hear about your work with with uh, the lead Vicente Santos, who's going to be uh, familiar to, familiar uh, to the audience to our audience from uh, Nelson uh, Carlo de los Santos Arias his uh, uh, Cocote, um, uh, which he start in which was in um, new directors of uh, a couple of years ago maybe um, so we could start by talking a bit about the casting and then maybe um, more precisely the actual working with the actors on set yes we we do a very long cast uh, with Katius Kalikaira there was our, our casting director and and it was very difficult to find uh, to find some of them to find Liborio we begin to cast a lot of people and and Vicente, we do a cast with him, but only me and, and uh, the producer, my partner, Fernando Santos, 
and at, at the Fernando's office, it, it was like a very, very uh, informal cast. It was like, take this, dance, do this, do that, but, and that's it. But I, I began to cast a lot of people for Liborio, famous people, not famous, and a lot of people. But Vicente was there, was there, was there always, because he has this powerful uh, uh, gaze, and, and he is a very big man, very strong, tall, he's black, a very strong black man, and, and he also was a dancer, so he, he used to, to work with this type of energies that we use, that Liborio used to heal, uh, the, this type of possession, trance, all that, that that we have in, in the Dominican Republic, our, our popular religiosity has, he has worked with that. So he has that. But of course, he, he was the main character of Cocote. Cocote was also, also produced by Fernando, my partner, the producer of Liborio. So I have this thing that, well, the theme is not that different. The main character, the producer, I have this fear to use him as, uh, as, a, as our main character because of that, but that was nonsense because, uh, I mean, he was the, the best uh, Liborio we, we could have. So it has to be him. Uh, once we decided that, that it was him, and when, when we closed the cast, we tried to, to develop like a community together with myself also and with the main actors. Uh, and, and Liborio, Vicente, was our, our leader because he was, he, he was supposed to be the leader of the community. And we made this type of games, uh, acting games, uh, that to, to get together, to, to smell, to, to sweat, to, 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 to get, uh, I don't know, to, to get comfort with, with each other, right? And to lose the fears of, of, get, uh, of, of being there. Uh, there, there uh, to lose the fear uh, for me because the director and, and all this, and me uh, to, to lose the fear to direct them because uh, it was my first feature film. I, I was also a little not scared, but, but because I, I think I, I at the moment I have a lot of uh, confidence, but but I was of course uh, a little shaky because uh, I, you have to confront all these forty people waiting for you to to talk. But then uh, the first time, the first rehearsal we had, I, I showed them the experience uh, that Lev Kuleshev, this uh, Russian theoretician from the uh, uh, mute cinema, uh, made with, with an actor that he, he used the, the field, the, he used a, a close up of an actor and put it with uh, edited with, with three different uh, shots, right? To, to, to prove the, the the force that the editing process have, that you can you can get three different meanings with the same acting, and we talk about it because I I, I want them to have something special in the eyes, to have a special gaze, and I was going to be in front of them all the time, but also I don't want uh, overacting, right? And and there we have a uh, the normally. In, in the film, you can, you can feel that, that the actors can be a little lower than they are, right? And, and I was very, very uh, focused on that. So each time on the set that I feel something was uh, getting a little higher than I think, I, I said, Kulechov, Kulechov, don't do anything, don't do anything. And they put, they put that and that was <laughs> great because you can use it. And, and, and of course, in the editing, you, you can, it's where, where the acting uh, finished, right? Uh, finished to, to, to be, to, be uh, to, to become, uh, to, to get the meaning, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we, we worked that way. And from that point, we didn't rehearse the real scenes because I don't want to, to burn them with, with, with them, with, with the scenes. So we, we talk, we try to share things to, to make this sense of community, to have confidence. And that's it. At, at the moment of shooting, I try to have a, a very open set, free set. We have marks, but not a lot of marks. Uh, and we have a camera in front of the character all the time. The camera follows the character. And the set was 360, so the character can move around the set. 
however uh, he or she wants. And uh, I think that way we achieve the, that the film has this truth that, that sometimes comes out and, 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 and I think that we can appreciate, I, I hope we can appreciate it. Uh, and I, I think that we achieve uh, great, great acting from, from uh, all of them, right? And, and we have also a lot of people who are uh, professional actors. We, have, we use a lot of people who are actually believers of liberalism that are all the people that, that, that are in the background singing, but also the, the mother of Liborio, the, the, the old woman, she's also a, a, a believer of, of liberalism. He, she lives there. And, and we, we try to mix and to have this balance uh, uh, between the non-actors and the professional actors like Vicente and the actors that, that were studying acting, but this was, uh, his uh, or her first uh, appearance in, in a film. Mm. I, I, um, I'm curious then, um, with, with the, uh, the non-actors who are sort of uh, real life uh, viborous, um, uh, was there ever, was, did you ever experience any sort of uh, tension with them because of the way that you wanted to portray Liborio? Or, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious a little bit about how that kind of, um, how the kind of exchange uh, might have gone, because uh, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you learn from them, they learn from you, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were very happy because they were, I mean, we were telling their story and, and they were like very, very proud to be part of, of the act of telling their, their story, right? So they were very, uh, very open to us, but, but these people, I, kn I knew these people from years ago, it's, it's not that people that, that we found and, and that, that we, we use in the film. No, it, it was people that, that I begin to know when, of all my, in all my travels there, when I was writing, and I always was with the camera. So they get used to that my relation with them was also with the camera uh, near me, right? So when, when we return with 40 people and a big camera and, and the crew and all this, uh, they were they were comfortable. I think they were uh, they were very uh, normal. It it was like a matter of don't look at the camera and be yourself, and and that's it. And and if you're singing, you're singing, and maybe somebody wants to do the great scene, but uh, but then you 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 take you took him and and said, look, you don't have to do this. You don't have to to show me the thing, you just have to, to be there and, and try to, to normalize the, the act of filming, right? Because it's not this big deal, you just have to, to be there. And, and that's what we want, of course. <laughs> and that, that was difficult to achieve also because actors uh, spend all, all their life studying to, to be there and, and, and to forget about the camera and the crew and all that. And, and I, these people, I think these people uh, are very natural and, and they just have to, to believe that you are telling, the, that you are approaching them with truth and then they, they open to you. And, and that's what happened to us. And, and, and we were lucky, of course, uh, because we have them and, and they help us a lot. Not only acting, they help us everything. Uh, reshaping the ground, <laughs> building the, the community. Uh, I mean, they, they help us uh, in, in, in all aspects of, the, of filmmaking, the, the people where we should uh, help us. And, and that was part of the project also. That was all, always the, the, the idea that, that was to, to, to try to, to imply them in, the, in this thing. Mm -hmm. um... And uh, yeah, I mean, I actually I want to uh, uh, focus for a moment, I, I guess, on the pun intended, on the uh, on the camera pun not intended, I should say, uh, on the camera, um, uh, which you you brought up a number of times in uh, uh, in regards to your some of the relationships on set, the way you you know you work with the actors and so on. Um, uh, the film is, of course, like uh, very 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 visually uh, striking. Um, 
Uh, I wanted to, I guess I wanted to ask a bit about your collaboration um, with your with your cinematographer. Um, and and maybe how how the two of you uh, talked about some of the um, I think some of the compositional uh, strategies in the film. There's kind of a mix of maybe sometimes more like naturalistic seeming, and then sometimes you know quite quite bold uh, tableau uh, type type imagery. Um, uh, but you know, much a lot of the film in, involves uh, shooting in kind of low light. Um, you know, low, low light conditions. Um, uh, but also, you know, uh, maybe I was just imagining this, but I thought there was also, so perhaps you can confirm or deny, there was like a shift sort of in the palette of, of the images a bit. It starts um, very, uh, it's very dominated by like greens and grays and beiges and browns in the first half. And then a bit of blue and a bit of red shows up uh, in the second half, I think. So, um, yeah, sorry. That was a that was a very long version of this question. It's really just uh, can you talk a bit about the cinematography? No, it's great. It's great that, that that you notice all this. Look, we uh, I know Oscar Duran that was the cinematographer. I know I I know him from a lot of time because he he used to be the the cinematographer of films that I cut as an editor, and we we knew each other, good films, I, I respect a lot uh, his work. And when I began to, to, to think about Liborio, uh, like real, like, well, we're going to make this film. Uh, I approached him and I said, look, you're interested? And, and he said, of course. And, and we begin to look for religious paintings, um, and most of them Spanish religious painting because we, have, we are in Madrid, we have the El Prado very near. So we, we, we begin to look for, for Catholic images and trying to, to, to find their uh, hope, symbols of, of hope there, right? We also begin to, to look for uh, Ansel Adams photography, Joseph Kudelka photography, uh, treasure uh, films. Uh, I don't know, we have a lot of references that, that we talk about, that we share but not like trying to, to be like, but more like this is the, the mood, this is the feeling that we want to, to approach. There we, it, it was him who, who of course put the lights and, and, and put the, the camera and then I, I, I look for it. But, but it was him that, who proposed uh, normally the, the shots. And uh, we tried to work with uh, low lights. We, we, we didn't want to, to have a, a lot of uh, lightning, light place, uh, because uh, it, what I told you uh, before, the, that we want to set 360, we want freedom, we don't want, we, were, we have to shoot a lot of uh, things very quick. So we don't, have, we, we don't have time to do a lot of uh, light, right? So we, 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 we work very basic. The nights we worked it with a real fire. We made this uh, torch, uh, torch bars uh, with the propane gas that the, the, the cast was very afraid of that because <laughs> it, was, it was near near them. And they were like, wow, and we can't control that. It was like, close it a little and, and it went off and then well, we have to light it again. A little and more intense this, than candle than candle light. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was very big uh, torch bar, and and we worked the nights with with that, and and I think that it achieved this. And then at the at the color correction, we we tried to depict like the the image of a of a dream, of a, of something believed, of something old, oldy. Uh, we, we use the word oldy viejuno. In Spanish, uh, that 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 was the kind of mood that we tried to to get uh, with the image. The image has to be ha, has to be away from what we normally see in the Caribbean. This tropical image of colorful uh, saturation and 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 a lot of contrast. We 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 get away of that, and we try to be more uh, like in a palette more. Uh, yeah, more more like dreamy, more oldie, and 
it, it, it works very well, this type of palette with, with the black skins, because if you have a lot of contrast, and with the black skin, you, you lose uh, a lot of uh, expression because you, you have the black, 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 very deep. And, 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 and if you have a, a, a more uh, subtle palette, you can, you can work towards a, a, a better expression of the, of the faces, of the black faces. And that we also uh, will work that and, and we work towards that. And, and I think that I'm very happy with the, with the work uh, with Oscar. I'm, uh, I mean, he's, he's a great uh, cinematographer. He, he studied there at, at the, in LA at the American Film Institute. And, and I think that uh, he, he achieved a lot uh, with the film. I, I don't know what has been of Liborio without uh, the, the help of Oscar and, and his eyes, of course. Um, yeah, I, I, I see that we're, uh, we're, we're coming close to running out of time. So I should probably ask my a final question, although I feel like there are like 10 things that I'm not getting to. So we'll have to, we'll have to do another Q and A someday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, um, but I guess uh, you mentioned so you mentioned like these uh, this sort of like classic like sort of like Catholic imagery and maybe and some of the perhaps some of the if not like visual references at least things like objects to consider in like thinking about uh, how the film would would like uh, look and so on. Um, I'm wondering if there are like. Um, if there are other there are other kinds of if not influences at least like um, uh, artworks that you had on your mind outside of painting and so I mean I'm talking you know I I think uh, film you know films obviously but also literature philosophy uh, you know uh, what have you um, and and then sort of related to that I'm wondering if you see the film as belonging as belonging uh, however loosely to any kind of like a a tradition of perhaps like uh, political cinema, um, metaphysical cinema, you know, et, et cetera. Um, I'm, I'm just, you know, maybe it's a difficult question to answer a little bit, but just sort of how do you see, how do you see the uh, uh, Liborio sort of fitting in with the, the bigger historical picture, I guess? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we have a lot of references. Uh, it's, it's, it was a very long uh, search and, and we, we traveled to a lot of uh, different places, uh, imaginary places and a lot of uh, works of different people. And, and, and of course, I read a lot of mysticism, a lot of uh, philosophy, a lot about the religiosity, uh, spirituality, messianism, uh, all this. Uh, of course, uh, in, in, in film, the works of uh, I don't know, Glauber Rocha, who made uh, the, uh, three films about the Messianism. Uh, Pasolini also used, uh, I mean, his first film was about Jesus. And, and it, there, there are a lot of film references. I mentioned Reyer first. Uh, he also, Berman, I don't know, that there are big names, but they are there, of course. They're, they are the directors that I, that I, uh, that I like a lot and, and, and respect a lot. And of course, I, I, I'm not comparing with them, but, but, but there are uh, directors that I follow and, and I know what they try to, to, to get. Uh, in literature, we have, uh, I don't know, Vargas Llosa made a, a, a novel about a, a messianism movement that I read and, and maybe get from there something, Jean-Claude Carrière, has a, a, a different uh, uh, set of tales about spirituality that, that I, I like a lot. Um, uh, Alejo Carpentier also has El Siglo de las Luces, that it's uh, a, a film about something similar in, in Haiti. And uh, we have this literature uh, things, but uh, in the structure we use, because we, we, we tried to make this invocation of Liborio, that the film was an invocation of Liborio. It was like a, like a Requiem Mass uh, that, that you do for, for the deaf people, so the deaf people can rest in peace, or maybe can help you to, uh, to get together again, or help you 
to 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 become him or or to to be here, right? So this invocation it depends on what you believe, right? But but this invocation it, we always have this idea of invocation that the film has to to be this invocation of Livorio because Livorio the figure of Livorio was losing uh, we were losing it. I mean in the sixties in the seventies we we have it a revival of liberalism but right now liberalism was like dead and it was something from for historians or anthropologists and that's why we, we try to do this and with this idea of the requiem we took the requiem of mozart uh, the, the unfinished requiem of mozart uh, we took it uh, as a in the script writing we took it as a as our main structure and there are reminiscences of that, of course, we, we draw it and, and there's, it's, it's not literal, but we use it uh, in, in, a, in a very big way. There's a, a movement of Mozart that is named Lacrimosa. There's also a chapter of Liborio that is named Lacrimosa. That's not, uh, <laughs> I mean, that, that's not coincidence, right? It's, it's like we, we try to do it that way. And maybe that that's are the the references, but but I think that what we we really tried to do was something new. We tried to not not to focus on to be like, but to be to be a Liborio, and and Liborio has to be a proposed a proposal that that speaks for itself, and the the film has to has to have its own uh, feel in its own structure. And it has to be something different. And, and, and maybe if I do something tomorrow that I'm going to do, look, uh, I, uh, I hope uh, <laughs> it is not going to be that, that way because uh, I think that each story, each film has its own form, has its own uh, structure. It's, each theme has, has its, its own uh, form, right? So. So Livorio has this form. I don't know if, if tomorrow we're going to do something different with a different form. I think that this is what, what we uh, achieve with this one. And I think that it helps very well to tell what we try to tell. Uh, that, that can be said by words that you have to watch the film to, <laughs> to feel it and to, to know it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that if you watch it, you can you can get a, at least a little of that what we intend to to do. I think that is uh, that's a, that's a good place to leave it for now, and uh, we'll have to we'll have to pick the discussion back up uh, when we when we get you over here. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, you know, thank you thank you so much for uh, for the film and and for joining us. And yeah, thanks. No, thanks you, Dan, and, and the new director of the film for having us and, and for having Livorio and open their door to Livorio, New York, and having our U.S. premiere there. It's, it's, it's a great pleasure in a city full of Dominicans to, to have this Dominican film there. Thank you very much. <laughs>